Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In previous videos, we've looked at this excellent setup from Matrix TSL to help us to understand how motors are behaving, and we established and discussed the concept of torque. But we said that in order to understand how to get a torque measurement from this piece of equipment, we need to understand the difference between mass and weight. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So what's the difference then between mass and weight, and why should we care about it? Well, your mass is a measurement of how much of you there is, and that applies to all objects. Mass is a measurement of how much of that object there is, and under the SI system, it's measured in kilograms. So in the SI system, we use the mathematical symbol M, lowercase m, to represent mass, and mass under the SI system is measured in kilograms, and that gives us the unit symbol kg, with a lowercase k, for kilo and the G for grams. Now this is an interesting one, it's a little bit of a, almost like an aberration within the SI system because it's the only unit where the base unit has a multiple in front of it. So the base unit for uh, distance or length is the meter, not the kilometer, not the centimeter, not the millimeter, just the meter. However, for mass, for some reason, the base unit is the kilogram. So I don't quite know where that is, and maybe someone on here could enlighten me, that would be brilliant. But what it boils down to is that, generally speaking, when you're doing maths that involve multiples and submultiples, your safest bet is always to put it into the base unit. So you'll convert kilometers into meters, you would convert milliwatts into watts, etc. However, the kilogram, the base unit, is the kilogram. So you wouldn't change that into grams when you're doing maths with it, and that is actually quite important for the subject that we're considering in this video. So mass is a measurement of how much of you there is. However, when you step on your bathroom scales at home, you often think to yourself, I'm going to go and weigh myself. But actually, you're not finding your weight when you step on those bathroom scales. You are finding your mass. Because weight is actually measured in newtons. Now this might seem a little bit strange, but bear with me. So under the SI system, we use a capital W to represent weight, and the unit that we measure that in is the Newton. So that gives us the unit symbol of N. So what does that tell you then? If weight is measured in Newtons, what else do we know of that is measured in Newtons? Well, of course it's force, isn't it? So your weight is actually a measurement of your force. How can that be? Well, if you think about it like this, I'm standing here now on the planet Earth, and that means that the gravitational force of Earth is pulling me down towards the ground. And because I am being pulled down towards the ground, that means that I am exerting a force onto the ground. And that force is what we call my weight. And that is measured in Newtons. So to illustrate, the way I think of this is that your mass is how much of you there is, and your weight is how much force that mass produces when the gravitational effect of Earth pulls me down to the ground. If I was to go and walk on the moon, my mass wouldn't have changed. There would still be the same amount of me, so my mass in kilograms would not have changed. However, my weight on the moon would be considerably lower because the moon has a lower gravitational pull, which means that the force that I'm being pulled down onto the surface of the moon with is significantly less. So my mass has stayed the same, but my weight has been reduced when I go to the moon. However, if I was to go and land on the surface of Jupiter, were such a thing possible, we're not 100% sure if it has a surface or not, but if I were to land on the surface of Jupiter, the gravitational pull there is so enormously huge that actually I wouldn't be able to support my own body weight. In fact, worse than that, the weight of my head on my shoulders would actually crush the rest of my body. I'd be kind of flattened down into a pancake, which obviously uh, is going to spoil your day. However, the point is, is that my mass would still be the same. There would still be the same amount of me in kilograms. However, my weight would have gone up dramatically because of the increased gravitational pull that exists on the planet Jupiter. So what's the upshot of this? Well, when it comes to our experiments that we're going to be carrying out using this rig, what it means is that when this motor turns on and starts to rotate the dynamometer and the dynamometer presses down onto the scale, the value that comes off this scale is not going to be the force, but it's rather going to be measuring. It's going to be giving a value of mass. And what we need to be able to do is convert that value of mass into a reading of force. How do we do that? 
Well, the way this works is that these scales are calibrated to work in Earth's gravity. So in other words, if I press down on there with a certain force, it's converting that force into a value of mass. And it's using a mathematical constant for the Earth's gravity. And what is that value? Well, on the Earth, the value of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So we can write that down like this. We can say that on Earth, the gravity, sometimes informally represented with a lowercase g, is equal to 9.81. And it's an interesting unit for this. It's meters per second squared. That's actually how we measure the force of gravity on different planets. So here on Earth, we've got a gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, if you know anything about physics, you'll know that this unit here is actually the unit for acceleration. So how does that relate? Well, basically, this number here is the value uh, that of acceleration that would be applied to you if you were to fall out of a plane, ignoring all the things like wind resistance and things like that, you would fall and your speed would increase at a rate of 9.81 meters per second per second. So every second that went by, your speed as you were plummeting to the earth would increase by 9.81 meters per second. So that's how we measure gravity. It's actually a value of, we can swap this out for, acceleration. So A is the acceleration due to the earth's gravity. Now that brings us to an interesting extra point and we're nearly there with the formula you'll be pleased to hear, that if you want to measure the force that is being created by your mass, you can use this formula. F is equal to ma. That's a very famous formula in physics. F is equal to ma. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So what that means is that actually, if you wanted to calculate what your weight actually was in Newtons, you could take your reading in kilograms from your bathroom scales, multiply it by this mathematical constant for the Earth's gravity, and that would return your force. Now we can use that in order to figure out how much force our motor is generating. So that's quite an interesting concept because we can take this mass, we can multiply it by the acceleration, and that will tell us what the force will be. So let's, let's just do an example to demonstrate that. If I plonk this spanner on the scale there, we can see we're coming out with a mass of 127.3. So in this example, we can see we've got certain key values. We want to know what the force is that that uh, spanner is creating by being pulled down by the Earth's gravity. So that's what we're aiming for. We now know the mass of the spanner is 127.3 grams. So we'll convert that into kilograms by dividing it by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.1273. Just make sure we've got that right, yep, 0.1273 kilograms. So that's the value in grams just divided by a thousand to turn it into kilograms. And we've got this mathematical constant for the acceleration, which is 9.81. So remember, this is acceleration in meters per second squared, but it's also the value for gravity that is pulling that spanner down towards the surface of the Earth. And so we've got a very simple calculation to do now. F is equal to uh, mass times by acceleration. So that gives us 0 0.1273 times by 9.81. And that's going to tell us what our force is. So we'll just pop that into the calculator. 0 0.1273 multiplied by 9.81. And that's going to give us a total value, a total force in this case, of 1.2 five we'll go with to two decimal places 1.25 newtons so that spanner is being pulled down towards the earth's surface with a force of 1.25 newtons so that's quite an interesting concept there so if you can actually do this for yourself figure out the the force that you need to overcome that so if i want to lift this up i need to apply a force of just more than 1.25 newtons to get it off the scale there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the scale of how much a Newton is. But what's the upshot of this? What does this mean for us and our experimentation that we're going to be carrying out on this test rig? Well, all it means is that when we put the scale 
into this rig and pop it under the dynamometer there, what's going to happen is that when we power this motor up, it's going to cause a turning effect on this dynamometer, which is going to press down on the scale. We can take that reading of mass and using the calculation that we just did here and inserting the value for mass there, we can figure out what the value of force is that's being created by this motor. And from that value of force, we can then go on to calculate how much torque this motor is providing. Now, at this point, this may seem like an incredibly long-winded process just to get to the value of torque, but actually what you'll see in future videos as we continue this range of experiments is that actually this is a very, very simple process. And all we're gonna end up doing is just one calculation and that will get us, or maybe two calculations, and that will get us to our value for torque. So it's perhaps not quite as complicated as it may seem at first glance. So in this video, we've seen the concept of mass and weight and the difference between them. We've seen the SI units that they're measured in. So again, typical exam questions may well include things like, uh, what is the unit for mass? That's a common one because again, lots of people get that wrong. The one that really catches people out is, what is the SI unit for weight? And you can guarantee if it's a multi-choice question, that the person who wrote the question will include both newtons and kilograms in there to try and throw you off. So remember that weight is a force and force is measured in newtons. That's a really important one. And we may also be called upon to remember this formula at certain times, F equals MA. That's a really important one. And a really key thing is to remember that in Earth's uh, gravitational field, the gravity has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared. That in itself is a bit of an exam question that might come up. You might be asked, what is uh, the value for gravity on Earth? You might even be asked, what is the value of acceleration for gravity on Earth? These questions often come up and the answer is 9.81 meters per second squared. So try and get that logged in your brain as it's a really important mathematical concept for beyond electrical science and looking at other areas of mechanical science as well. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>